Did I ever look at the statue in Epiphany Fields? I don't really remember it. What a view. This is the Sentry, sculpted by Lieutenant Peter Hasborough. It was installed here in 1979 to remind all who view it of Fort Milner's original intent, to serve as a beacon of harbor defense. Though the base would eventually become acclaimed as the birthplace of many radio innovations during World War II, and until its deactivation would be known more for its schooling and the tragic sinking of the USS Kanaloa, the fort's spirit will always be that of the watchful sentry. Steady, protective, and ever vigilant of enemies both foreign and domestic. This is the s <laughs> No, look, it kind of made sense. Hey, guys. Uh, wait, did I get the plan wrong? Because if I got it right... No, you didn't get it wrong. You're supposed to be yellow brick roading it to the wood station right about now. We're just taking this way, that's all. What, the scenic route? Everything's the scenic route. There's no quicker way. Uh, okay, well, we'll be here. Good luck. I was definitely checking up on you, Ren, and totally not looking for notes or cairns. Oh, there's a cairn right here that I missed. At the little mini shooting range place at Fort Milner. Now, seven. Our low frequency radio wave is incident upon a body of radio waves travel forever until it is absorbed by matter or a person. Ooh, I saw a note here. Hmm. The communication school here taught them how to make codes. Recruits learn communications technology here, and several others learn code breaking. It's true. But due to my aptitude in math and mechanical engineering, I was assigned code making, specifically ciphers with which to conceal projects from even other government agencies. It was a job I grew increasingly uncomfortable with, but my keen interest in radio science had me pulling double duty as a comms officer. I remember one of the Canaloa's engineers, Francis, calling me a radio woman. As far as he knew, it was my only job. Ah, oh, another one by the well. They, um, Maggie and Anna tried to bring the soldiers back in the cave. After stealing equipment from this relay station, Anna and I entered the cave just before dawn to try and communicate directly with the crew of the USS Canaloa. We successfully tuned in to the source of the temporal temporal tear, and spoke, albeit briefly, to Henry Griffin, an SOC sergeant who died on the sub, but the power overwhelmed my dear Anna, and she was absorbed into its ridge. All that remains there now is the flickering hue of a partially open gate, a window to a perpendicular space that seems to have augmented the submarine's call. But of all my regrets, perhaps the deepest is knowing Anna's last vision was of me fleeing from her in terror. You know what time it is? It's four in the morning, which is usually about the time everyone decides if they're going to bed or ordering another three pizzas. Yeah? What's your vote usually in uh, that situation? Usually I'm asleep at 11 with my hand half dunked in the chip bowl. You think this tuning into the tear thing's gonna work? Like, really? It really doesn't matter if I think it's gonna work. It's sort of all we have, and we're running out of time. It is all we have, yeah. I just... I just wish I felt like the ghosts were concerned that their plan won't work. I just feel like they're pretty confident. Like they know by sunrise they're all gonna be shopping for school supplies. Jonas, they should be concerned. They should be... scared. And that's on them if they're not. Alright, good to hear. I bet you there's a note right at the top of this hill feels like it. I bet you there isn't a note at the top of this hill. Oh, there has to be one up here though, right? I remember it. Yeah, I just saw it. I came up here earlier and there was absolutely nothing, which was really surprising. Oh, Maggie thought that the way the ghosts can talk to us and vice versa is waves. Anna and I frequently conducted tests at what was once the East Barracks here during the brutal winter of 51. Waves of any kind, radio, nuclear, electromagnetic, seemed able to pass through all existences under certain circumstances. 
which explained our ability to get communiques sent from them. This might also justify the frequency of hearing one of the Canaloa's electrician's call signs, Calvin Gilbert, come echoing through the relays. On April 4th, 1952, we would attempt to reverse the manifest breakdown and bring the soldiers back. Now the station's up at the top of the hill. I hope this works. Me too. So I've got six more letters to find, by the way. I found seven so far. Six more to go. It's a little bit more than halfway. I bet there's a letter over at the cemetery. Yes. She thinks that the ghosts were pushed out of our reality and maybe aren't actually dead? My belief, bolstered by Anna's and my research conducted largely at the Catbird Station, where interruptions were rare, is that the men and women of the USS Canaloa were separated from our dimensional existence by the implosion of a submarine's nuclear reactor. I identified one passenger, Henry, by his call sign, and his confused diction and reliance on game logic says to me that their emotional states, if not mental states, has been reduced to that of children. A thought I cling to when I envision Anna's demise. Now the station's up at the top of the hill. I hope this works. <sighs> God, we're in another loop de loo They always come at the most appropriate times, don't they? <sighs> now the station's up at the top of the hill. I hope this works. Yep, I am also... hope that. Let's go a different way. Well, that didn't help. There's got to be like a tape layer or something around here, right? Doesn't that how? It, oh, there's somebody down here. Ren, Nona, what happened? What's wrong with Ren? Ren, he's, he had an accident. He, he died. I couldn't. Nona, come on. Clarissa was dead too, but like bunny ears dead, not dead dead. Because apparently killing yourself doesn't actually do anything here. Alex. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, Nona. I didn't mean anything. What happened? He... he drowned. He took a fall. I don't know. He just... he just stopped. I mean, does it really matter what happened? Either way, done is done. And done, in this case, is particularly done. No, you're not Jonas, so there's no use in pretending. Soon it won't be a pretense. It'll be an absolute. Alex, we know you're in charge, and we know your plan, and we also know that your plan won't work. It never does. So we have a proposition for you. A deal. A bargain, really. And you... A proposition? Like what? It's already over with Clarissa. She's gone. We'll pilot her through the rest of existence, and there's nothing you can do to change that. But if you agree to let us take her, let her go quietly and without fuss, you won't slaughter the rest of your friends, like young Reginald here. We leave the rest of you cattle alone. We only really need the one, anyway. I don't, I don't get it. Why do you even need my permission if you have her already? Don't misunderstand. We don't need anything from you except what we can willingly take. We're merely offering you an arrangement that would leave both parties satisfied. Well, somewhat satisfied. Oh, forget it. No deal. Everyone is coming home with me. <sighs> Courage is not always the way, dear. You don't have much time left. Do you know how we know you don't have much time left? Hmm? Fine. Shoot. How do you know? We know because we can be Jonas for this long, and his soul is as quiet as an empty church. Just never say we didn't provide you all the rules. Jonas? Uh, 
I know he was your best friend, Alex. I I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know what happened. One minute he was there, and then he was just. It's okay, Nona. You. You didn't do anything wrong. I know it's not your fault. Of course, it's not your fault. I didn't know him that well, but I like what I'd gotten to know. I'm sorry. It's. I shouldn't. It's colossally stupid of me to talk about him like that with you here. This is. He was more important. It's not stupid. It's not small to like somebody. It doesn't. It doesn't diminish anything. <sighs> Maybe. It's a tiny thing, but. I hope he knew that I liked him. And I don't know if he did. He knew, Nona. Don't worry. He knew. Like I said, it's a tiny thing. But thanks, Alex. The station's up at the top of the... Ugh. God. That was... My mouth feels like I just ate a tree. The ghosts, they tried to make, like, a deal with me for Clarissa's life. I didn't take it, of course, but... I don't know. I, I just thought you should know. God, that must mean they're getting desperate or something. If they had any, like, power over the situation, they wouldn't try to work out a compromise. Anyway. Hello? Anyone there? What? Are they? Oh, they're, um, they're somehow... I guess they're somehow broadcasting or something from the, uh, station speakers. <laughs> Are you guys at the station? Anybody? They're both Jonas? Alive. That's all I care about. Jonas, punch uh, Alex if you can hear this. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a bonus, too. Seriously, right in the throat. Jonas, don't listen. We're all set here for the, uh, the thing? The machinery speak and hug or whatever we're doing? Yeah, let's do it! Time's a wasted. Hello! We're here. We made it. Hello. Oh, hello! This is Edward Island's emergency. How may I help you? If you're being sat on by a very large burglar, just mash the dial with your fist, please. Um, look, the, the ghosts told me they wanted to, to make a sort of deal for Clarissa. What? I said no, of course, but... Uh, I don't know, I just thought you guys should know before moving on. Alright, well, let's do the, the thing and get into the shelter and try and fix this fast. Signal verified. Shelter TF1 open. Nice. I guess it worked. Great. Okay, we'll meet you there. Right. See you at the shelter. Over and out. Okay. Close the time hole and save the day. <laughs> <laughs> Literally my goal. I'm trying to think, are there any major areas I want to go to to find more notes? Because I doubt I'm going to find... Like, I don't know if I'm going to find any notes or any cairns when going through the shelter, possibly. But there must be some that I didn't find out here. So, like, where have I been and where have I not been? I've been around Fort Milner. Not super deep into it, but I don't think I'm going to go into every single little building. I think that'd be too annoying. But, um... I have been to most of Fort Milner, Relay Point, Capgrounds, Bridge Stand. Uh, I didn't go to Hardin Tower. Tohe Woods. Did I go there? I don't think so. So I think Hardin Tower and Tohe Woods are the two kind of major areas I haven't explored now that I can find the letters. So let me check those out along my way back to Epiphany Field. Dear Mr. Jordan, couldn't we have him reborn? Uh, what? Who are you talking about? Okay, 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 I'm... Jesus Christ, I really hate that. But I'm... I think, um... It's getting worse, Jonas. The sun's coming up soon. I think we're running out of time. Yeah. Um, look, it's scary, needless to say, when I, like, drown or whatever in my own body, and it's starting to feel like just... Like, how do I say this? Because I don't want to... It's okay, wanna... Jonas. Just say what's on your brain. I just want to say... I just... I think it would have been cool, us living together for... For whatever. Senior year. And I'm just... Glad I met you, that's all. 
I'm just glad we met. <laughs> I'm glad too, okay? So there, it's out in the open, we're both glad. Okay, good. So, that's it. And now we can go back to the whole escaping and trying to live another day thing. Yeah, let's finish strong now. No half-acidness at the end. George three. Ah, it'll be good having somebody else here to watch after the grounds, Bill. I was at Park Warden in Grants Pass, so this will be old hat to me. William Marshall, a local park ranger working in Edwards Forest, killed himself today after what his wife describes as a years-long battle with depression. His body was found hanging from a tree in the... Oh, Jesus, what are you doing jumping across that? There's another... there's like another way down here. I can't believe you even made it. Look, Jonas, I do like a million jumping jacks a day. This is nothing. Oh, I didn't realize. Sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know if I've been here before? I mean, I've obviously been in Tohi, uh, woods before, but... Have I actually walked here? Like, this table and this chest, I don't really remember it. All this furniture. I think this um, stuff is getting pulled in from like their time or something. This is so weird. Um, yeah, it's not exactly a good omen. I think we're running out of runway here. Yeah, none of that was there before. Hmm. There's kind of like a whole lower level that I want to check out. Ah, another letter. I guess Maggie was the one who had this place turned into a park. After the fort closed, I used the considerable resources from my father's endowment to buy up most of the land, or influence government officials to declare that which I could not buy protected. I have not been entirely successful, and have watched in horror as a small tourist industry has precariously sprung upon this cursed island. Even the family of one of the sailors who died, Calvin Gilbert, set up a restaurant to cater to inquisitive out-of-towners. I can promise this, though. The museum will never happen, and the beach and caves will be boarded up. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna say one thing, and then I promise it'd be the last time I bring it up tonight, but you know you screwed up with Ashley at the concert, right? I mean, it's not a giant thing, but still. Huh? I didn't screw up. How was I supposed to know her mom was going to call in the car stolen? I thought she had permission. Give me a break. Even if you didn't know, which, come on. Even if you didn't know that, you still knew you didn't have permission to go to the concert. <sighs> Just tell me it's the last time I hear about you stealing a car. However inadvertently, my little heart can't handle the excitement. It'll be the last time, but maybe not for the reasons you think. I don't really care about the reasons. Just for my own sanity, don't do it anymore. Oh, and I wanted to say, um, <laughs> per your advice, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna really, um, like, commit to Clarissa. <laughs> that sounds dumb, like I'm pinning her or something, but you, you know what I mean. Wow, big man on campus, I don't know why I said that. Big step, that's what I mean, big step. Eh, it's not a big deal, I'm just letting you know, so, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why, I just wanted to tell you. Come on, let's get to the sentry before the last boat comes. I gotta get the, uh, visual aid for the history project. And then I just gotta write the stupid essay. What history project? They still make you do, like, work with so little left in the year? Unfortunately. This is, it's just like a town history thing for civics, you know? So it's forced me to kinda, I don't know, and I mean, it's funny, I don't know if I even want to be here next year. It's just all so flat. Same people, the same expressions. Really? Why leave? I mean, yeah, it can suck sometimes, but it's pretty much like everywhere else. This is gonna sound weird, but everybody knows me here. I know you think I have it on easy street, but people looking at you all the time, wanting evidence that it's good, that they lived here, that good things can happen to people that are from here, it can get to be a real drag. Like, how about somebody else be captain of whatever for once? Give me a rest. You were 
are great, though. And and you're going to be great whatever you do. I'm sure of it. You got spunk, kid. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, let's head back before Karen Strands is here. You know, when we saw Uncle Pete last month, I wanted to ask him because he, he got out moving to New York. And I asked him if it was hard leaving. Know what he said? Uh, it was hard? I mean, knowing Uncle Peter, he was probably three sheets to the wind. He said the hardest part was deciding what to take with him and what to leave behind. I thought it was, I don't know, for him, <laughs> kind of almost touching. Huh, that's actually, <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> I cannot believe I had to pick you up from the police station because of Grand Theft Auto. I mean, that is too funny. <laughs> Stop it! Alex? Stop it. Just stop. Ugh. You got, you know, you went bad again? I couldn't get you out of it. We should really, we should get this done, now. I saw, I saw Michael again. I just, I'm sorry. When I'm there, I just get sucked into it like nothing happened. Come on, it's all right. I think I can hear Ren and Nona down there. Yeah, just one second. Let me check out Harton Tower for any notes. Oh. Never mind. I can't do that. Just don't say anything to them, okay? This is... It's just like a trial period. Like, buying a used car that I can already tell is missing a lot. What? I know. I'm cool. So don't get, like, overly excited. I'm not excited. This is just... This is how I normally stand. Alright, but seriously, just don't say anything, okay? Hey, I'm... secret secrets are no fun unless you share with everyone. What is it? Reveal yourselves. We're dating. We're dating. Nona and I, we're gonna date. Rin, dude, what did I just say? What? They asked. Right? You asked? Ugh. Oh, I don't... No, Nona, why him? I want to say that, but also I don't want to shit all over Nona. Uh... Really? Him? You? Is this like a Cancer Kid last request sort of thing? <laughs> what? No! It's one date at the Revival Theater. We're just gonna sit quietly in the dark and watch a documentary on Bosnian genocide. Hmm. Romantic. Aw, how cute. Riviera is a great movie house. And the ushers can't tell where you're putting your hands if you sit in row G, by the way. Please don't tell him that. Anyways, I know it's stupid to be planning or whatever for this, but I don't know. I just feel like maybe it's not that insignificant or whatever. Whatever. Truly the language of love. <laughs> Shut up. You know what I mean. Good. I'm glad. This is... I mean, at the very least, I'll get to hear embarrassing stories, so... I... I want to get this off my chest. Just... Something happened to us tonight, Alex. Something broke. I don't know if it was the ghost or whatever, but you've been acting like not you. Ren. No, I just, I don't know. Ren, are you, this is what you want to tell me before we go in there? I know, I'm sorry. It's, it's just been, it's just been a crappy night. I don't even know what I'm saying. This is stupid, but can we like take a picture? Why? I don't know. In case things go bad and... Yeah, let's do it. We're on a beach. Kind of. Let's keep a shred of normal here. All right, let's take it. Alex, get in here. You're not getting out of it. <sighs> All right. Once we're in there, the door won't open again since the system's so convoluted. So make sure you're ready to finish this before we go inside. Let's take a look at that picture. Any demons? Hmm. No. No, it's actually demon free. Alright, so it sounds like, yeah, that's endgame in there, so let me see if I can go to Harden Tower now. And what Ren was saying about how Alex isn't acting like they usually do, is that because I've been shitting all over Ren? Because I get the feeling that Alex is normally a lot more accepting of Ren. But since I'm playing Alex, and I'm the one in charge, <laughs> I am not accepting of Ren at all. Aha, there is a note. Oh 
she was working at the tower the morning they sank. I was on watch duty in the tower when it happened, having just gotten back from an early leave for the reading of my father's will. For years I childishly blamed him for this, too, his one last act against me, but it was nobody's fault or decision but my own. I'm sure it was Francis Salter who sent the Canaloa's distress signal. It had been cut off, I still don't know why, and I hastily interpreted the garbled transmission as an attempt to jam radar, and so I sent back the guidebook recommendation to scout and bomb if necessary. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're all gonna head to the bomb shelter. <laughs>